everybody. I'm your host, Brian Watkins, and welcome to another edition of the Brian Watkins channel. My subject today is about what I miss most about Albie Shore. The reason why I'm making this video is for all the Albie Shores all across the world. Let's get started. I remember coming to a knowledge of Albie Shore's music in the height of the New Jack Swing era. It was, uh, we were staying on Danbury on in Detroit, Michigan, off of Eight Mile Road near John R. And um, I remember my sister and her friend, which I'm not going to name neither one of them because I'm going to tell you something, y'all, not to get off the subject. But when people start to see that you are gaining an audience on YouTube and they see, you know, a lot of things are going in your favor. And I owe all of that to my viewers, my subscribers. I appreciate everything that you have done for me. It is not unnoticed. It is greatly appreciated. They start to change. You know what I mean? So getting back to the original part of the uh, video. They were, ah, they lost their mind over it, I'll be sure. So I heard this, I heard the hit song, uh, Night and Day. I liked it automatically. And he just, when he came on Soul Train, he just exploded. So much so, I have a brother that actually looked like him. And he was already, um... He was already kind of wearing his hairstyle like him before Albie Shore even came out. So all he did was did a few little slight modifications to his hairstyle. And he was working at that time at Ford Motor Company. And he had an uh, automobile. I forgot the name of it because they stopped making it, but it was sweet. I still don't understand why they stopped making that particular video. I just mean particular automobile. So make a long story short, we hanging out on a Saturday. And the women's lost their mind because he looked just like them. So at this time, he came out with Night and Day. So um, I, f I forgot who bought his album, but I listened to it. I liked every song. He just, see, I'm going to tell you something I didn't know about him. I didn't know that he was also a songwriter and a producer. I didn't know that. He had took off so, you know, well with uh, coming out with that album. And this was, you know, right around the time of Bobby Brown, Teddy Riley, Keith Sweat, um, Heavy D in the Boys, uh, Gerald Levert, uh, Johnny Gill, New Edition. Um, it was just huge. So he was like all in the middle of it and just laying the ladies out. So I always figured he was cool. I always liked him. Um, I just missed that era of music because... What he did was he took hip hop and R and B and sensuality of a man wanting to be with that special woman, and he mixed it up where it it, it was just extraordinary, and uh, all that's gone today. You know, I mean, I don't really know too many people that can bring that type of signature style of music for 2017 and I'm not saying that there isn't any talent out there that could bring it or even surpass it it's just not on the scene right now uh you all can correct me if I'm wrong but I don't see it I don't hear it so um then he came out with um well he got on the uh, album with Quincy Jones back on the block and uh, you, you all remember the hit song uh what was that song it was him El DeBarge Barry White um, something to do with a garden here in the garden where the temptation is so ripe. He killed it. Just killed it. And he just vanished. He didn't record for 17 years. Now, he's back on the scene now. And a few years ago, he was producing uh, his son's music. They were rappers. And I took a quick peek at it. It was pretty cool. But it was nothing like what he did. Just... I've never heard nothing like that since. And him and uh, Heavy D, which I had learned, 
him, Heavy D, and um, a DJ, they actually was a group, not an official group, because all of them were shopping their demos on an individual level. So as soon as Heavy D and the other guy, the DJ, had got a group uh, record deal, I'll be sure kind of phased out, but he was still shopping his own um, demo tapes to get a record deal. And it was like 50 demo tapes and Quincy Jones picked him and he did a good pick. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what I miss most about I'll be sure everything. It's just, it was, it was a once in a lifetime experience. And I'm glad that I was um, around when it actually happened. I was there. So, you know, you know what I'm about to say. That's right. Subscribe to my channel for two reasons. I make videos constantly. And also I'm running a contest where you can win cash and prizes. But this is how it works. In order for you to put yourself in a position to win, you have to click that button right now. That red button. Why? Because I'm going to use a previous video. Now, I'm going to name the video because I want you to win. So go on and hit that subscribe button. So that way, when I mention a certain phrase in the video, you would know exactly what to say and you can fill in the blank. Those of you who like my videos, click that you like that like button. And thank you. I appreciate all of your support. And the player haters who don't like my videos, you can click the dislike button and I always got something to say to y'all haters you may think you're hotter than me not just tell me I'm cooler than you I'll get down so with all that being said you can leave your comments or you can put in special request videos and I will respond to them accordingly and you can continue to support the Brian Walker's channel by making a donation to the link in my descriptive box don't you go anywhere